So I would imagine that HBRIC is going to give HBRC all the help it can to make sure that how, how on earth they're going to monitor and regulate un, under, the, under the rules that the Board of Inquiry comes back with. So we'll be making representation and I guess this council, your staff are presumably working on it now in terms of how they, in, in how they should respond. Thank you. Um, so, Councillor, we'll, we will be, um, um, as the um, ultimate owners of Plan Chain 6, um, uh, working on providing um, uh, a solution to, to the board, and I'm sure they'll be given a number of potential solutions to consider. Um, we, we, our, our view is that they have been asked to, um, to review Rule TT1J uh, and to change it. And, uh, and particularly in relation to the to the deeming provision, that's quite clear. Um, so I think that we need to um, look at um, providing them with within the planning framework, within the current objectives, policies, etc., some options around how that rule might work. Will we, as a council, have some, council have some understanding of what that position is going to be before it's? Proposed. Uh, once it's um, prepared, we'll, we'll we'll certainly inform you of what that is. Yeah. Sorry, just to, to go on from there. This is a matter that I discussed with the chair before the meeting started today. Um, are, are you in a position to get somebody to give us a bit of a briefing on what the issues are and how we might look at tackling this particular issue that the courts thrown back? Yeah, not, not today because we just yeah just received the uh, the decision on on Friday, um, so it wasn't obviously available for for this agenda, um, but we could, we could do that in the in the new year in, you know in the next available meeting, which will be at the end of January. Councillor Scott, I wonder if I could get some clarity from um, um, HBRIC around the um, questions around the integrity of the hydrological information about the flows into the dam and its ability to um, provide the projected water it was um, raised earlier today that there is information that suggests that that cannot be met and questions are asked around the um, um, ability to enforce the water users agreements if your calculations were incorrect. Are you aware of any credible science that is actually questioning what has been presented to us and could you outline just where we stand on that? So that was a matter that got dealt with um, substantially through the Board of Inquiry hearing process, in actual fact. Uh, the hydrological expertise that we used in, in that catchment came from Tonkin and Taylor, Taylor um, and the primary, the primary uh, hydrologist um, who, who signed off that work was a guy called David Dion. Funnily enough, he did he did the work for Opua um, as a matter of interest. Uh, David's professional assessment, what he indicated was plus or minus 10% range in his numbers, which were based on actual data off the, uh, the uh, rain gauge stations, as opposed to the, what we call the NIWA, the NIWA virtual climate uh, data. Um, and it's, a, you know, the, the issue is it, it plays a, what would you call a synthetic record, so it's a combination of gauging, rainfall data, um, gauging outside of the subcatchment, that sort of stuff, synthetic record, it's quite a standard hydrological process, it's not unusual. Um, it's done all the time uh, and in, David, in David's evidence he said plus or minus 10 per cent. I'll probably say it here actually, in, da in David's in David's, David's be happy to say it, he reckons it's plus or minus 5 per cent accuracy. And for what it's worth, the Board of Inquiry endorsed that particular view. Um, so uh, the other more generic point I would make is that uh, looking at that synthetic, you know, what we call a synthetic record, on an average year, it's around about 200 million cubic metres of water through that um, subcatchment. So it's not as though it's a, uh, a, a matter of order out. Uh, in, in our review of reliability over the 40 year period, um, we picked up uh, four years where there was either modest curtailment or some curtailment potential. Um, unoptimised. 
So I think think we we like everybody else relies on um, expert evidence and expert assistance in these cases, uh, and I think that's reasonable. Are we ready to go to the financial part of the discussion, everyone? I think we probably are. So hand that over to Heath. I know there's at least one question. Uh, it's the one page report on 58 with the uh, report from pages 56 and 57. So the, the financial report on page 58 um, for the for the Rua for Phase 2 development expenditure that's uh, reporting against the approved budget um, that was approved by Council in August. Um, it's up to the 31st of March 2014 and to date we've had two uh, work streams where we've had cost overruns. Um, it's been mentioned previously by um, Jim uh, around the EPA Board of Inquiry costs. So we've had $134,000 there of overspend, which, which are costs that are outside of our control. Uh, secondly, the High Court appeal costs. Uh, so this is our RMA legal team. Uh, so when the budget was approved, we approved 125,000, split 50-50 between HBRIC and HBRC. Um, at that time, there was a uh, two-day hearing was planned. Um, it ended up being a three-day hearing. Um, we've got additional costs that have come about because of that, which uh, has been 35,000, which will be split 50-50 between HBRIC and HBRC. And obviously one thing that's not reflected in this budget, um, this paper was written last week. Uh, the High Court decision came out on Friday. So it um, doesn't reflect any uh, Board of Inquiry costs to, for the referral. So that's one thing that we'll need to make an assessment of um, in January with the HBRIC Board. Any questions? Right, questions. Um, I think uh, Councillor Graham indicated he had one to start with. Um, so you've got operating income and you've got um, development expenditure. Um, I'm just wondering why um, it, uh, Mr Newman's, um, who's on to comment to you, is not in your top line rather than in the under, H, uh, under um, um, Hawke's Bay Regional Council staff. Why have you done that? His, his time is split, so there's a small element of his time that's related to operating um, HBRIC, which we've determined at about 5 to 10 per cent, um, on the basis that the majority of um, Andrew's time is related to the RWS project that's been capitalised into the cost of that in HBRC internal staff time. So it's not reflected in here? So in the management services HBRC, there's a small portion that's reflected in there, yeah. with the majority in the RWS phase 2 development expenditure under HBRC internal staff. So you're capitalising it on a monthly basis? That's correct. Good. Uh, any other questions on the finances? Councillor Balfour. Do we have any, any idea what the costs awarded will cost us? I no, we don't. <coughs> at, at this stage, no. No, we have no idea of the quantity. If I can just sort of reiterate, that will come out of Council's operating budget, not HBRIC. I'm sure we'll find out in due course. <laughs> Any other questions? Also related to plan change six, exactly. Yep. Any other questions? Someone happy to move that we accept this report? We have a mover. Thank you, Councillor Dick. We have a seconder for that. Thank you, Councillor Bevan. Wish to speak? Reserve. Reserve. Other speakers? Councillor Graham. Uh, firstly, um, I'd just like to say that I um, sympathise with um, Councillor Balford's view that um, I think it's very optimistic that we will um, meet the financial close date as the estimate that we currently have, which is 30th of March. I think that's very optimistic indeed. But as counter to that, um, I am very encouraged um, that uh, you've raised the issue of um, you're just not going to willy-nilly spend a quarter of a million dollars a month. And um, I'm very encouraged by that because it's kind of the first time it's been said. And um, so um, just to counter my negative comment, I think that's a very positive approach that we need to be very careful each month we go forward here now. Very good. Other speakers, uh, seconder, you wish to... Yeah, well, he didn't give me a chance. I oh, know, because he leapt in. It's very rude. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to struggle through. So, um, no, thanks for thanks for coming along. It's been really helpful discussion, and thank you for sharing some numbers with us because it's really nice to know, under, know and understand what we're dealing with here. So, I do appreciate that. Thank you, Councillor Belford. Well, uh, as Councillor uh, Rex said, uh, it is nice to hear that uh, you were nervous enough about the prognosis here to not spend $20 million uh, uh, on, on uh, launching uh, the dam. Uh, but I guess I, I would like to see this go further in, uh, in January. Uh, I just wonder how long uh, your board is going to let this twist in the wind uh, and, and how you would come to a judgment that enough is enough. Uh, and when would you present us with an exit strategy from this proposition. You have your sense of what's happening. We, some of us have a different sense of what's happening on the ground and what the prognosis is. And uh, uh, at some point, uh, rather than adding increments of activity and increments of activity to this uh, indefinitely, it does seem to me that uh, there's, there comes a point where the, the question needs to be called. And this, uh, Business with the with the um, with the high court, uh, we're we're going to, and I, I gather some of our partners are going to basically refinance uh, Fish and Game and Forest and Bird and so forth. Their treasury is going to be full uh, as they go into the next round of, of discussions uh, uh, on on the water quality aspects that, that uh, surround all of this, uh, and. Uh, it seems unlikely that, that, uh, that from their standpoint they're going to back off very much on this. And so the process does seem like it will continue for a while uh, in an unresolved state. And unless you're, you're prepared to tell us that that doesn't matter, uh, whereas HBRIC has previously said if this looks close to the original interim decision, we have an unviable situation. Now we've been told, well, we're, we're going to have to land somewhere between an unviable situation and maybe less unviable situation. Uh, and that will become clear, presumably, somewhere in the first quarter, maybe. Uh, and uh, is that the trigger? I mean, when, when do we, when do we uh, feel that uh, the deck is clear, uh, water users, potential water users know everything they need to know, and they're either now yay or nay on the basis of eyes wide open, able to make <coughs> the final decision here. Councillor Belford, I mean, we, we don't need an answer to that. Oh, no, well, I'm, 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 I'm happy to say that the concerns that you've articulated are articulated at every board meeting of Aitsbrook. Hmm. Right? I mean, we go, through, we go through the same thing. At the last Aitsbrook board meeting, we declared a solvency certificate. To, to pay the dividend that the Aitsbrook's just received the port to pass on to pass on to council. And I can assure you the discussion about the next six months was part of the board determining the solvency certificate to pass on to pass on that dividend. So we do talk about it at, at, at uh, every meeting. Thank you. Other speakers? Councillor Scott. Um, thank you, um, Mr Chairman. Thank you to the board members and to um, Ms Newman for the, the presentation. Quite some time ago, Mr Chairman, we um, gave, um, ex through a vote on this council, the go-ahead for this project and our support for it. Um, the fact that we're going through a statutory process and that that has many um, twists and turns that's the same of any um, legal, legal cases and it's something that we have to work through and live with. The point of um, reaching a um, no-go decision is when we can't reach financial close because we can't satisfy the conditions precedent. We know that, we've discussed that, we know what those conditions are. We know where it is. Quite frankly, it's time for us to continue to keep the um, confidence in the process that's going and I want to thank you for the um, presentation today that is, um, gives us reason to continue for that support and not undermine this process. And it is a shame when we read things out there that deliberately set out to, um, with, um, mainly with misinformation, to um, suggest that that, that that confidence isn't there. 
We are in the middle of a statutory process that has to be worked through. In the meantime, there's a lot of other things going out there that work with the water users and we need to keep that confidence going that that work can continue and not be derailed. So um, I'd like to express my thanks for what we've heard today and my continued um, confidence in the process that you're following. Thank you. Move it. Do you wish to sum up? Um, we, all, we all know, or most of us know, that this project is of vital importance to Hawke's Bay. It's a game changer for the environment and for the regional economy. And if the irrigation scheme, water storage scheme, does not proceed, Plan Change 6 will proceed, driven by the, 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 the government's obligations, or our obligations, to meet the government's requirements for water quality. And um, if the project does not proceed, and Plan Change 6 does proceed, then we're in trouble in our regional economy. So uh, I've seen um, projects not as big as this, but um, almost invariably subject to significant contention, um, sometimes from well-meaning people, and, but often from uh, people who are either confused or who have, um, do not see uh, the benefit that's going to derive um, particularly for the environment and, and why organisations like Fish and Game have to be in there litigating with, with us is beyond my comprehension. But um, in conclusion, um, nothing that is great and significant happens easily, so we press on against all obstacles in my view, and we plan for success. We don't plan to shut up shop. Thank you. I'll put that motion in. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Carried. I'm going to have to leave the chair for a second, but I am going to suggest, um, Deputy Chair, that you continue, and you should be finished in between five and seven minutes, I would think. Let's... Uh... <laughs>